योग कर्मसु कौशल हेलो एवरीवन आई सी ए डॉक्टर मर्जुन जोखी थैंक यूजीसी ह्यूमन रिसोर्स डेवलपमेंट एंड सेंटर ऑफ गुजरात यूनिवर्सिटी फॉर गिविंग मी द ऑपरचुनिटी to connect with you and deliver my session on a very important topic of the evolving technology in our accounting profession i thank professor dr jagdish joshi professor and director of ugc hrds of gujarat university sir this is an excellent initiative and i am sure that all the participants are going to get the maximum benefit and being a student of gujarat university i find myself extremely fortunate that i am given the opportunity to share on this platform so thank you so much the topic that we are going to discuss i'm going to share with you evolving technology and that is the future of accounting now over here accounting we are not going to see it as only a subject that a student is studying probably in the school or the college but it is going to have a uh, a different uh, meaning or we can say it will be having uh, overall a broad perspective that is how we are going to discuss about the evolving technology ugc hrdc gujarat university is ranked 15 in india it is pioneer and created history by organizing the first of its kind online refresher course in india in the year 2018-19 wherein a record 2500 participants have attended the first of its kind online refresher program in english language wherein a record 3500 participants have attended the first ever online course in e content development during lockdown and unlock one and more than 130 courses is 5000 participants have successfully completed the participants are from across the country and the first online professional development program for administrative staff of university during lockdown with 105 participants now the topic that i am going to share with you being the evolving technology so because of the word evolving we will first try and capture that how the evolution for our accounting or the basic number crunching what we call it has commenced evolved and where are we now and what next if you see the pic over here towards your left uh, a visible individual on a typewriter and probably we may feel uh, we can recall a traditional uh if if you can recall a movie where like this individual were called uh, muninji that is the person who will take care of the day to day accounting but towards the right when you see the pic it is giving us an idea that direct human element is not involved it is something like robot that we see the pick about 
at school when we studied the subject we always started with understanding that accounting is a business language though the language has gone so many changes throughout ages probably centuries by now but this transition from a traditional individual taking care of the day to day activities to a robot this is how the transformation has happened and but obvious the reason is technology and still it is evolving if we first start to check about our history for how we started the number crunching so this pic will depict and you will also all agree that way back in the beginning with the invention of abacus this abacus first recorded use is way back in china during 600 bc although we were not calling it as a technology but it was helpful to us for the calculation part and that was definitely very much helpful to the then accountant who were taking care and it was slightly a mix of the mathematician and the accounting portion then came after the abacus then came the invention of a calculator so again over here you will see the technology has helped at that point of time from the calculators with the help of abacus now we will be able to do the calculation with speed and the accountant's job was slightly uh, we can say they were relaxed and uh, the burden was reduced when calculator came but after calculator the fraternity was extremely happy when this invention took place that is of computer because calculator also has some restriction but computer and that to after that we will see what happens after computer so this computer was actually we can say a real evolution that was accepted very well accepted and everyone was excited to see the use and the help the organizations the institutions the proprietors the companies that they will be getting after computer then came the software part of it so what we call it all the tele packages or the tailor made packages for the as per the requirement of the company or the institute or the organization so microsoft excel when it was launched again the excitement skyrocketed like anything because from calculator to computer and from computer we got excel and when we got excel we studied it the advantages it was amazing and it is actually amazing there there are so many uh, shortcuts or we can say the tricks of doing the calculation fast accurate and it is going to save a lot of time as of today also and it is again evolving excel is also evolving and from this transition or the journey now we can say that now this pic that is visible to you probably will go past in the history books now you will not see probably any individual taking a typewriter or a old machine and doing the work this is all that has been what we can say transformation because of the technology from the number cruncher to the advanced program now the question arises what next that is a very important or a relevant question and even this to pick will depict that the human element everywhere because of the technology has come down there is a decrease on the dependence and once that happened we are going to again 
I'm going to share and we are going to discuss about that it is actually really shocking when we see the data. We all are very familiar with the accounting or the father of accounting. But Deloitte and all the big four, they have been talking about the technology portion and very specifically they are mentioning that the robots are coming now our idea about the word robot is something different but 100% this robots and the robotic process automation what we call RPA that is also an accounting part is going to be extremely helpful for the organization but on the other hand from the individual's viewpoint if we don't update ourselves we are going to follow the dinosaur route and during this last probably one and a half or two years have made us realize that how important it is to keep ourselves updated with the technology and we have actually learned it. Still, we need to learn more. Now, this was the uh, data that I just mentioned, referred and I was talking about. This pick is again very self-explanatory that automation is actually threatening so many jobs and the accounting profession also is included the sources and the references are kept over here this slide indicates that probability on the left in the table you will see the probability that computerization will lead to job losses within the next two decades and if you just very quickly go through the list and to the second last of the order in the list towards your left it is mentioned accountants and auditors and the probability is given 0.94. What does this indicate? That 94% chances are there that the accountants and auditors might end up losing the job to the robots. So this is actually a very scary picture. It has been a recorded portion over here with the reference uh, the list where we will understand that everything probably the list will give us an idea that not only accounting profession but so many other profession are also in the danger because of the evolving technology when I say danger danger from the individual's viewpoint but benefit to the organization definitely and we will have to also with the technology we will also have to evolve ourselves uh, get ourselves updated to the new things irrespective of the age or we follow the dinosaur route this is again a very interesting portion where we will try and take a judgment that because of the technology the low skill jobs are at a very great risk or we can say a greatest risk and it is very interestingly quoted that while the old jobs will be replaced definitely change is constant new ones will be created and this is a very interesting data and probably a very scary data that 65 percent of the children entering primary school now are expected to end up working in roles that currently do not exist it means whatever the student or the individual or the child is studying right now, what does that mean? That when that child is out in the corporate world, probably what he has learned is not relevant and he is required to learn something new. But the basic schooling and the education is so important and that is going to create the fundamental. But the new skill set Earlier we say uh, probably discussed like that 20 years the generation changes.
but now it is time that probably in very couple of years we find change in the younger generation skill set and we are also required to adopt that quick now we go specific to the accounting profession and when we talk about accounting profession with this the next decade i think these are the three challenges that everyone everyone may be an organization or the professional accountants or an educational institution and probably the list is going to be endless everyone these are the three major challenges that one is going to face because of the technology that is evolving smart and digital technology continued globalization of reporting disclosure and standard we have all all new standards and uh, something new that we have to comply with and that is the need for the day and the new forms of regulation so these are the three challenges that one will have to constantly understand and update so that we can face them positive a very recent article on 24th of jan 2021 it was reported in the economic times and i feel pride to share that india being the first country they are going to release the forensic accounting and the investigation standards and this is the first country to do that so this is one we can say new type of the uh, disclosure the compliance requirement maybe the new form of regulation so we will have also have to understand the new type of accounting rather than the traditional we can say financial accounting or what we call it cost accounting or slight advance form management accounting there are so many different that we will have to study and that is the reason it is the evolving technology for the accounting and also the profession and from forensic accounting it comes forensic audit we all know about internal audit statutory audit about tax audit cost audit but now because of this technology because of the frauds that are taking place and it is so difficult to even identify probably the red flags and we realize after it happens and the money is lost but now even our country and government of india is adopting a highly collaborative approach in addressing various challenges like fraud financial misplacement or deceit or uh, we can say or all that uh, is taken away the swindlers of the money so forensic audit is also a very very required and government of india has also realized the need and it has been made compulsory for few of the organizations and even in this vision new of new india 2022 the government of india has very specifically mentioned that we are going for building an inclusive india which is free from the problem of corruption terrorism poverty communalization casteism and fit that is not and over here the corporate fraud and everything has been included so that we are free from that at least let us try so that we don't fall in that trap now when we talk about the evolving technology probably when we studied uh, to analyze the financial statements how we did was and what it is also taught at present the interpretation and the analysis of the items of balance sheet or the income statement may be in the horizontal form sometimes in the vertical form and with the help of few ratios fine well taken that is actually a classical approach because this technology we have we can for the same accounting what we have done all the different types of ratio to check the liquidity we use that current ratio to check the turnover we use the stock ratio everything fine 
but as we have the advantage of the technology and the technology is evolving on a constant or probably a very fast rapid pace there are so many other approaches that can be helpful for analysis rather than only dependent upon our standard ratios that what we have studied i'm going to discuss a couple of them with you the first one that we talk about is the modern and the mathematical approach and in the modern and mathematical approach the two portions that we will be discussing but i strongly believe that the classical approach is traditionally used to analyze highly aggregated data but can provide only a broad indication of the potential fraud it is not that from that we won't be able to figure it out definitely we can have an indication but this modern mathematical approach because of the technique we can pinpoint we can further go down into the depth and figure it out that what are or where are the chances the potential part and the first one that i'm going to share with you is digital analysis has been created by the individual and from his name it is called benford's law now what this law or what this technique is informing us it is a analysis of frequency of digits in every transaction it's slightly interesting see any transaction suppose if we are buying a petrol uh, and if we buy it for 1000 rupees then the transaction has four digits one to the first and then three zeros to the second if you are uh, buying some stationery and if it is costing 520 it has three digits 5 to the first 2 to the second and 0 to the third benford law is giving us an analysis of frequency of digits this is slightly interesting and how it works i have just taken up a example a representative what was done is there were total 7000 transactions very careful now the transaction which started with digit 1 in the first place there are 1000 it means digit 1 means 1200 rupees or 1850 rupees or 1999 also all the transactions starting with digit 1 or it can be 12 rupees it can be 125 rupees anything but starting with digit 1 in the first place there were totally 1000 transactions out of 7000 transactions then transaction starting with digit 2 in the first place it means 20 rupees or 29 rupees or 256 rupees or 2032 rupees so transaction starting with digit 2 in the first place there are 5000 transactions this is an actual data total there were 7000 transactions and from doing this we can figure out the percentage it means that out of the 7000 transaction we can say that 14.28% of the transactions will be starting with digit 1 in the first place then 7.14% of the transactions in this organization recorded transactions are starting with digit 2 in the first place and that is how last one 28.57% of the transaction are starting with digit 9 in the first place this is how the actual happen now what has this benford law given to us benford law has given us a table not only for the first digit but even for the first second third and fourth so how it works in the table if you see the first one is given digit 0 now this digit 0 in the first place is not a possibility digit 1 in the first place it is written 30.103% means approximately 30% it means that as per this analysis the time tested model 30% of the transaction of any organization maximum 30 can start with digit 1 in the plus 17.6% of the transaction maximum 
in an organization can start with digit 2 in the first place. That is how second, third place, fourth place also we can check. My example is right now we are sharing is only for the first place. And same way if you go to the last, 4.57% transaction will be starting with digit 9 in the first place. So we have this tested table. What we say as a log table or we go and check for the chi-square test and all that. Same way z-score and all that. Same way this is mentioned and given. It is a time-tested model. Now what we will do, we are going to compare our actual percentage what we had checked in the previous portion with this, we can say this is the range boundary and then we will realize and when we do this, in this slide we will realize that the transaction starting with digit 1 in the first place actually were 14.28%. Standard frequency say up to 30 percentage it is fine. So no problem. In digit 2 also actually 7.14 percentage. In transaction actual is 7.14 whereas in the table it is mentioned 17.61 percent. So still we are within the range. But if you carefully check the transactions starting with digit 3, digit 4, digit 5 and digit 8 and 9, the actual frequency is higher than the standard frequency given by the Benford law. What does this indicate? It does not indicate that all transactions starting with digit 3, 4, 5, 8 and 9 are fraudulent. No, but there is a potential risky area in the transaction starting with 3, 4, 5, 8 and 9. So the auditor or the management or whoever is assigned the responsibility of checking will have to concentrate on those transactions and there is a possibility that when you do an in-depth testing, you will be able to capture a probable point of fraud. Definitely every law, every model, every test have their conditions, restrictions, we can say limitations. This Benford law can be used only and only if you have 300 transactions. But if you go to check the organization as a whole, even if you have a transaction a day, probably in a year you will be having more than 300 transactions. So I can say that practically this law this digital analysis can be checked across every organization and we can figure out a potential risky or a fraudulent area where in-depth checking can be done. Another model that we will very quickly run through is a banished model. Again, coming from the name of the individual, Professor Banish. Professor Banish has given an analysis which results into an M score. And we will see how this score is required to be checked, reached and compared. The standard M score has been set at minus 2.22. It means after using the requirements of the model, if the outcome of the actual analysis is less than minus 2.22, it means that there is a zero probability of manipulation in account. And again, this is a time-tested model. But if your actual analysis is not less than minus 2.22, there is a probability of something cooked up wrong done into the books of account and over here this is the model definitely you can think of applying to again for any organization and the last part over here see there are 
eight different ratios that we need to work upon. In the last portion, when you see m is equal to minus 4.84 plus 0.92 into DSRI, DSRI is given in the first part, that is the day sales in the receivable index and so on. And with this model, you will be getting your M score. And if it is less than minus 2.22, there is a zero probability of manipulation in the account. But if it is not, we can come to know. And now when we are talking about the evolving technology, a very recent uh, article I am sharing with you where the GST officials are going to use this radio frequency identification RFID for detecting tax evasion because there is a possibility when this e-way bills we will not go into the details of the e-way bills and how it is uh, happening how it is recorded how it is checked at the checkpoint and all that but they have realized, the officials have realized that some manipulation is taking place for this portion of the accounting. And they are using the technology to detect. And GST official for the accounting part and using a radio frequency identification technique, it's something probably unheard and uh, it is well accepted and to be appreciated and to be appreciated. This is all happening and I did mention that it is not only the book accounting that we are going to share. It is actually accounting on a very broad perspective. And this is a, a great uh, initiative by the GST department to catch hold of the wrongdoers because of the technology. Again, we very, very quickly check that we all know about the debit and the credit card numbers, how uh, it is a 16 digit number. We are also aware about our Aadhaar card number where our Aadhaar number is a 12 digit number. But two things I'm going to share with you. This all your debit credit cards number. They are based upon again a technique called Luhan's algorithm and the other number generated the program is based upon the Verhoff algorithm. Now, how this Luhan's algorithm works, and it is actually working, and we will not go into again in depth of it. It is actually working on a modulus 10, or we can say mode 10 algorithm. And there is a way of checking. Now, this is slightly interesting. I'm going to share with you. There is a way of checking that the provided a uh, number, the 16 digit debit or a credit card number, whether it is correct or incorrect. So this is a number that I have kept. It is a 16 digit that is double five two six four three two nine zero seven two zero four seven four six. This is a 16 digit number. Now there is a way or a trick or a step to check whether this number is correct or incorrect. What we will do, we will be starting from the last digit to the extreme right that is six. Okay. Now I'm just showing you so that you understand slightly in a, a better way. From the last digit, we are going to skip the last and we take the second last. We double it. So six I have skipped. Before six it is four, four I am doubling it. Again I am skipping the third one, fourth I am doubling it. Again I am skipping the fifth one, sixth I am doubling it. Next I am skipping, next I am doubling it. So that is how what I have done is, I have kept the first one, third, fifth, 7th, 9th, 11th, 13th, 15th as it is and the 2nd, 4th, 6th, 8th, 10th, 12th, 14th and 16th digit coming from the last portion I have doubled it. This is your second row. Now in the third row what we will do is we will be writing again the full row. How we are going to write the full row? For the double portion we will take that number. So it is 10. So 1 plus 0 is 1. For the untouched digit, which is not double, we will pick up from the first row. So 5 comes down. Then 4 comes down. Again, 6 from the top comes down. 8, which is double, comes down. 3 from the top comes down. So we have taken up. And now interesting is that you should take the total of this last row. And if this total adds up to, 
a number ending with zero that is either 70 or 80 or 90 or 60 it means 1 plus 5 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 3 plus 4 plus 9 till the last 6 if you add up and if this total becomes a number like total is 50 60 70 80 if it is a total into 0 your debit or credit card number of the 16 digit is correct otherwise it is incorrect same way our other number and see how the technology is evolving and helping our other number what we feel because i did mention 12 digit and you also will agree it is a 12 digit correct yes visibility is 12 but just to share with you actually the other number is of 11 digit the 12th digit though it is 12 if you go to count but the 12th digit the last digit in our other it is actually called a checksum now what is checksum actually it is a check digit we can say it is helpful to reduce the likelihood of the error by introducing a final digit so it is so uh, linked and framed that after you insert the 11 digits and when you insert the 12th one the checksum digit if there is any error of a wrong digit which you have inserted automatically the 12th digit when you insert will throw back that this is a wrong number this is a wrong number and that is the reason the 12th digit has been added in this algorithm Verhoff algorithm has been used to find out and to help that the earlier digits were not incorrect so 12th is a checksum digit. Now again how this technology, I am sharing with you some practical examples that how this technology has helped for this accounting profession in a broad perspective. We all know the gentleman Ramalingan Raju. We have uh, the records with us. We have studied probably the case study of Satyam and so many things, maybe good or bad, we are aware about. But the researchers of Russell, Tony and Shefali, this is a very uh, published paper. I have kept the reference over here. It is very interesting also. What they have done, and it is actually a real surprise when we realize it that this is how is it a possibility that they have not only analyzed the financial part of the report. See, normally when any company is coming out with a report, we focus on the finance part of it. When we want to analyze, may it be the horizontal one, may it be the vertical one, may it be the ratio. And even the earlier two, the Benford law as well as the Banish model. Over there also, if you recall, the portion was on that numbers, but technology can help us to check, not only focusing on number, but to our surprise, the top management language for the signals of possible deception, something very interesting and unheard of. What they did, they have studied few years report the Satyam chairman's letter addressed to the shareholder and in that report from the management top management language they are able to come to a conclusion that even when the management or any individual is thinking of any wrongdoing the effect will come the impact will be there the result will be there on the language also and this is very very interesting this is very interesting now we will see four completing analysis were used complementing an analysis of the tone of the letters a study of the frequency of the use of the personal pronouns the relative frequency of the 
extreme positive emotion and the negative emotion and the text analysis software program that is Diction 5. Now this is very interesting which is going to examine a text for the verbal tone across five master variables. So what they have done is they have studied the language, they have studied the report, they have actually studied that what was mentioned in that last five years report and it was found on the belief that certain emotional and cognitive changes occur when an individual is engaging in a deceptive behavior. This is slightly interesting and this changes will include a need for the person to manage the external image they portray because see there is something wrong that is happening and the management knows that the wrong is thing happening but they don't want to portray that and they want to give a good picture to the outsider and it was also comprehended that the deceivers at that point of time Ramaling and Raju they actually subtly shifted the blame away from themselves as the level of the deception increased by seeking and they wanted to spread the responsibility and how they did when they studied the narrative communication and this is a very interesting part I will again request everyone that in case when you get some time you need to go through this research paper that they actually studied that initially when the reports were out and when Ramalingan Raju and the top management were mentioning the matter to the shareholders they were using the singular pronoun I that means they were actually boasting they were boasting to the shareholders that this is our benefit or this are the advantages and this is all that we have done but as they have started into the fraudulent or the deceptive activity of taking siphoning of the for money or the funds what they did was in the language they realized that in five years report from the singular pronoun I it was transferred to the word V and there was a very increase in the positive tone in the CEO letter earlier it was not and there was a gradual decrease in the numerical reference it means what that suppose if you take that five years report the first year report it was mentioned in the report that there is a 80% increase in the revenue there is a 20% increase or is a 20% increase in the profit and we are going to give you 10% dividend 30% dividend so that were the references that were kept in the report on the earlier part but when in the earlier years but when this started the deceptive the idea about siphoning of the money then what happened from that I probably I say it is arrogance part from that I they have shifted it to the V means they wanted to share and shift the blame there was a very increase or a positive tone rather than the arrogance as compared to the earlier and the numerical reference were drastically going down so this is a very interesting way of understanding that rather than only focusing on the financial part of it or the numerical reference the technology is going to help us in such a way that we can also use the other portion the non-financial data for figuring out that there is a possibility of finding that there is a red flag or there is a fraud so this is very interesting and further this technology Though we call it the accounting technology because we are trying to cover over here and I am going to share with you the evolving technology with accounting. Whether we like it or not, whether as a manager of the institution or an organization or a company or a leader or a proprietor, whether we like it or not, but world over now we have believed and we have accepted that we will have to stay with the technology we will have to stay updated with the technology and there are so many instances that we are finding it difficult to accept that, to adopt that and over here again the rightly mentioned in a survey conducted that 41% of the CFO world over has cited that the technology as a major source of stress in the job but I feel that there is no way out and accounting and finance is going to be ruled now by artificial intelligence and when we talk about the evolving technology world over 
these are the areas we can say it is the next generation i think one can also figure it out that from here also further research also maybe someone can think of the doctoral program or a post doctoral program probably this can also be thought of thinking for that additional portion of the doctoral or the post doctoral program all this technologies it will be difficult from my side to uh, share with you everything but i will try my best to just uh, sum up everything so that we can understand that these are the possibilities artificial intelligence and robotic now this is a very in thing we are actually uh, reading also in the newspaper watching the television in the discussion also informal we are all talking about artificial intelligence and yes google has also signaled it at the next big thing and the big four and so many organizations and so many studies and so many reports also have placed on record that half of all the finance and the insurance job at the medium to high risk of the total automation and we have also checked earlier that 94% of the accountants and the auditors job are at a risk because of the automation and that has been Uh, regularly uh, in the multiple studies it we have found that this is going to happen and we will have to remain constantly updated again a very interesting i'm sure we all know this but i thought that i will better share and based upon that a couple of more things humans granted the citizenship definitely but for the very first time in the year 2017 sofia was introduced to the united nation and sofia the robot i repeat sofia the robot was granted saudi arabian citizenship and becoming the first robot ever to have a nationality now this itself indicates this itself indicates that technology is not knocking the doors but already have entered into our lives now when we talk about the accounting portion and the robots and the technology we call it short as boats that is again actually robot in business and can show an intelligent computer system is described as the first computational knowledge engine for the financial industry and this is helping the rpa what we call about the robotic process automation i am going to share with you a couple of examples to make us realize that how this rpa is going to take away uh, suppose if i am an accountant and i am doing the routine work how my job is in danger and this uk based aria a natural language generation software has been designed or framed in such a way that human if i am an employee in an organization as an accountant i will be working for 8 hours maximum 10 sometimes 12 hours but this machine this robots this boards or technology are going to work 24 by 7 i will be taking certain leaves as and when required or needed this robots no leave no vacation this indicates that the work is going to happen fast accurate i may have an health issue but robots will not have an health issue so technology is going to be there and it is going to be probably risky dangerous for individual if we don't update ourselves kpmg has been using the innovation met predictive analysis suppose if a report is given to me for studying and if it is of 50 pages to analyze the report 
I think as a human, we all will need some time to understand a project report for 50 pages. If it is for, for the loan part of it or for any further reason, any project, we will need some time for proper understanding. But this predictive and Watson analytics can, it is actually exciting, can read thousands of pages of this contract agreement and report and very quickly to the perfection can give you and summarize the results for you. So now if this is the possibility, where are the companies and organizations going to employ me as an individual or a normal accountant where this technology is going to play such an efficient role without wasting of time and to the perfection. And this is what we call and talk about robotic accounting. Actually, it is there existing right now and few companies have started implementing this. And actually, it is the need also and advisable also. It is not that they will be removing the employees. No, the valuable man hours of the employee can be used for some other value addition rather than doing the mechanical old stereotype jobs. For example, consider an individual Mr. A is an accounting executive in a company. Now, what is his daily routine? I have kept over here. It is a pre-RPA. Pre-RPA means before this robotic process automation has been employed in the organization before that. What he will do, his role. This I have kept over here, the role of that Mr. A as an individual. He has a QuickBook, Excel, a PDF invoice from a customer. He pulls out the data as needed. He then pastes in the Excel part of it. He pastes in the program part of it. Then he can uh, further uh, transfer it in simple language for making the check. And when the check is ready, he will be again giving it to the vendor or some online transaction can happen now. Now, this is actually a typical job of an accounting executive in a company. He is not doing anything more than this routine daily. Now, if the organization can understand properly, can synchronize properly, can adopt a mechanism that automatically the things can happen without any hindrance and problem. Actually, that individual need for sitting on a place and doing the same and the same thing eight hours a day can be stopped and that individual man hours can be used for some value addition. But there you will have to frame some system. And there are so many things in an organization which happens in a very monotonous way. So at least for that portion of the activity, we can think of implementing the RPA. For example, bank reconciliation. We know in the system wherever cash book is. We know in the system where the bank statement are. We can set the program in such a way that at the end of every month, it will be comparing the two transactions in both the books. And if the transaction is not appearing in either of the books, at least it will appear in the reconciliation mm -hmm. statement. And that is a possibility. And so many organizations, so many organizations have adopted this RPA technology for doing this. And there again, when you go with the technology, when you go with the model, when you go with the law, there are not we cannot say their limitations but there are certain conditions or restriction yes well taken so over here also rpa can be used where rule based task they are consistent repeated and they are template driven suppose if a discount is required to be offered to an individual customer and if the discount policy of the company is not same, if some customer they give a 7% discount or some they give a 9% discount, then this may not work. But if it is a 
properly system driven organization with the time that if the payment is being happening in 15 days time you get a benefit of 2% discount if it is getting delayed by 15 days you only get a benefit of a discount 1% and if it is delayed beyond 30 days, then no discount. So if it is a template driven, consistent, rule based, system driven, then that can be applied. And in any organization, there are so many things. These are few to share with you, which can be well synchronized, framed, template driven, system driven, so that so many man hours, the valuable human hours can be saved and can be used for other value addition. From the sales service part to the procurement part, finance and audit, from the tax portion, generation of the return, see what is tele software and all this ERP and all that they are doing. For HR, for IT and for so many. Out of this areas, out of this functional portion, even few if you can implement with RPA, so many man hours can be used advantages individual works for eight hours or ten hours a day individual take leaves maybe for personal reason for medical reason not possible to work 365 days a year not possible to work with the same efficiency and it will also going to cost if you want to hire a very skilled employee all this can be taken care if you are implementing the robotic process automation and these are the advantages these are the advantages and a bit of the conclusion rpa is not a physical robot it is a configurable software so what we will understand from here is that if we can realize that whatever organization company the institute wants to be done if that need is properly listed down pen down and if we can synchronize it properly, then it is possible that we can get this implemented. And this robot is going to work for us. And there is going to be no problem if it is properly checked and implemented and even updated time to time. And where then that human brain can be used for the updation part of it based upon the, our experience. Now, when we talk about artificial intelligence and accounting profession, we talk about the future. We all know about 2020. Now, we need to go for 2030. For 2030, how this accounting profession and the technology, what we call artificial intelligence, is going to take the role for. And for that, I'm sharing with you best analysis. That is your political economic, socio-cultural and technological. More focus I am going to give on the technological part. But in political is USA is no longer the world superpower. I am talking for till 2030. The world power is split between US, Russia, India, China, Japan and Germany. For the economic part, it is going to be an end for extreme poverty. The Indian government also is taking so many good initiatives for that. It is going to be rise of the middle class. From the social part of it, population definitely in India, but we need to take the advantage out of that. Literacy rate is going to be 100%. So though someone can say that population is a disadvantage, no, we can actually take the advantage of the population. And now this comes an important one. This is the data that has been published in 2020 talking about 2030. But out of this, some of them has already been. Yes, rightly, probably you might have figured out self-driving vehicles, robot soldiers in the army, drones, smart cities, what we are also talking about. Already it has been started. We are actually watching and witnessing also. 
artificial intelligence is nothing but the smart way of living and these are the normal applications of our artificial intelligence in the current scenario even detecting the credit card frauds it is going to help us our smart car smart homes everything we rely on the digital part of it that is being taken care by artificial intelligence if you see the data the global market of ai in 2016 was around 1.4 billion and in 2025 it is going to be expected around almost 60 billion so just in 9 years just in 9 years from 1.4 to 60 a huge jump even the global gdp and that is all thanks to ai and it has been recorded proved studied that ai can increase business productivity by 40% now who will not dream of implementing ai in irrespective of the organization that they are managing and this is just the history of ai i think the familiar part the familiar part was first we realized in 2011 what we call about siri the smartphone users will agree to me then what we uh, uh, were understanding and talking about was alexa that happened in 2014 way back we are in 2021 so this is actually a timeline of ai and right now we all talk about drones and what is this netflix and all about i'm going to just quickly share with you siri we all know alexa also so many advertisement are there it is not right now the, the current invention it happened way back in 2014 when we talk about uh, a driverless vehicle tesla is the company they have actually started it what we talk about netflix and probably from this last year we are all dependent upon this this is again the technology ai pandora where it is actually for the music lovers nest can be useful for your smart homes and drones that we have just talked about maybe in the positive way or some enemies are using it for some problem but again this is going to be extremely useful even into the day to day routines very soon very soon now coming up to how ai is going to help in education and that we ourselves have realized in this recent past that irrespective of whatever happens in the world we are confident that with the technology we can continue delivering the needed portion and i again at this point also really appreciate gujarat university and the team for thinking of this initiative which can be extremely helpful to all the participants the smart content the intelligent tutoring system the virtual facility probably we have realized more in this recent past than we thought of as per the study earlier maybe in the year 2018 19 towards the end of 2020 when they were doing some study that what will come in 2021 they were thinking the study showed that for after 2021 this thing might pick up but because of this problem the pandemic we have realized that what we thought of will happen after 2 years has actually happened and it we have preponed the happening we can say and not only that 
at so many places online lectures definitely it is the need for the day and it has been very well delivered everywhere but even the assessment part of it because of the technology has been taken care of so nicely it is proctored online assessment where again the scope of what we say cheating drastically reduced and this is all because of the technology and we will we as a faculty member we will have to think of our roles also elevate our roles as a facilitator as a motivator and when we understand the technology in a better way it will be good for our students after this we like to very quickly share upon again some technology is that has been used for our computing part of it or our accounting we all know cloud computing we feel it is something uh, new to us no it is not actually it is not if you just quickly go through what we talk about the google gmail what we talk about uh, that we are saving certain things online so what is that that is actually cloud computing the drive what is that actually it is a part of it so we all feel that we don't know cloud computing but we are actually in that what is this online banking that is happening and you can transfer the funds without going to the bank if you just recall maybe up before 10 20 years for transferring the fund you have to go to the bank give the check stand in the line uh, receipt and then the transaction transfer happens probably after a couple of days and then again you will have to go with the passbook and to check whether the transaction has been properly recorded or not i think that is a history now you can very well sit at your own place and do the accounting for anyone for your clients big companies have realized probably in the recent past that there was no need of the infrastructure we can provide the technology to the employee and employees can stay back at their place and do the work without any problem without any problem blockchain again this is the technology that has been into our day to day functioning whether we realize it or not it is actually the word comes from that you are actually combining some blocks into a chain part of it earlier the bank what i did mention earlier that when we are required to transfer the funds it took a couple of days for the transaction but because of the blockchain the system has been linked in such a way that with a click from one bank to the acceptance by the other and the transaction is routed immediately and it has been linked so if there is anything incorrect it will be stopped that is how the chain has been formed and in 2019 even we have realized 11 indian banks including the leading banks have formed a consortium to introduce and run a blockchain linked loan system for sm and even bob and sbi and indus bank have involved into this linkage and blockchain is one future of it can also be a topic for the doctor's study blockchain has already entered into the education sector all uh, this is what the happening of the certificate program the refresher course that we all are attending we will be writing our assessment it is everything going to be recorded our a viewing to the lectures our assessment part of it so all this is happening because of what? because of blockchain and 
again you can also have the facility of on demand learning all this models and platforms that have been developed by ugc where a student get an advantage of doing a curriculum or doing a course attending it giving the assessment and getting the certificates it is again so important and it is going to impact it has impacted i will go to say, our higher education and we need to understand as a, a facilitator as a tutor as a motivator that what is our role and we need to link it with the role of the students and what are their expectations unless and until we don't do that it is going to create a problem and i'm just sharing with you that what are going to be the universities of future it is completely going to be a very changed scenario everyone's role is required to be a revised to such an extent probably before 2019 you all know how the system of examination worked how the system of assessment worked and when this is online happening how the system will work everyone will have to learn and it is going to be constant not that once you learned it is going to remain forever so university of future is going to be completely different and it is going to be digital and what we are calling about the new thing and that is flipped class now what is this flipped classroom what will happen right now if when i go for a lecture i go with some notes or some questions i go discuss that question and solve in the class and the student will understand discuss and copy out this is how the traditional system is working in this flipped classroom i am going to share the case the question the students are going to study that and then they come to the classroom for the discussion rather than only i informing them to do this writing i will be sending to them the recorded portion the reading assignment and the material and they will be ready with everything and then they come to the class and we have a healthy discussion this is going to be the need of the day and we need to understand this realize it and we have to we as a faculty member we will have to get ourselves updated because the younger generation is extremely smart than what we think of from my side how this technology or artificial intelligence is going to be probably in next few years the world will be vastly a different place in 2030 2030 what i feel it is slightly a long time maybe in 2025 only we are going to see some something new and ai can be a tool for competitive advantage for every organization for every institute and for every company now because of this technology there are certain worries and my worries over here are while this technology is on the whole likely to create more jobs than destroyed some industries are likely to lose more jobs to machine than the new technologies will create so we will also also have to think of our own if you recall uh, in the beginning we shared that today 65% of the children what they are studying when they come out to the corporate part of it after their education they will have to learn something new the management the ceo the cfo of the future will have to understand the technology rather than only an expert in financial management or an expert in accounting 
and unless and until we into the accounting profession the commerce profession if we if i don't understand the technology and the significance i will have to go to the dinosaur way the dinosaur root extinct and by 2025 all digital data will be available to everybody and i think that technology holds the future irrespective of the profession if we don't understand that and study it properly it is going to be extremely difficult for each and every individual irrespective of whatever qualification the individual will possess because all that qualification that everyone has acquired is actually a history it is a past it is sunk a very important question to ponder upon let us take an example that i know accounting properly but i am not well versed with the technology and there is another individual who is extremely well versed with the technology and he has some basic understanding of accounting now a company today will not employ me though i know understand accounting so nicely because i don't understand the technology company will prefer to appoint a technologist who understand accounting because that person can be taught easily rather than teaching technology so this is a question to ponder that do we needs accountant who can understand technology or do we need technologist who can understand accounting i feel that organizations are looking more to the second category individual than the first so this make us realize the need that we will have to remain updated irrespective of the age irrespective of the qualification that is all from my side thank you so much everyone and this are certain references and further readings so thank you so much i really again appreciate and thank gujarat university hrdc and professor dr jagdish joshi for giving me the opportunity to share with you thank you so much stay safe and stay blessed thank you everyone.